Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Sunday night. West Coast time here, 11.27 p.m. Sunday night, July 28, 2024. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D globe here. Shows a 1.6 into the uh, Alaska area. We did see uh, some movement out in Utah and also some larger quake activity down in the Kermadec Trench and the Aleutian Trench here. We'll get to that here in a second. I want to cover the space weather activity that we're looking at here. Uh, over the next couple nights. Not tonight. Generally, tonight's going to be a uh, uh, really not going to expect much here, but it looks like tomorrow night, Monday night, into possibly Tuesday night, we got a G3 to a G2 class storm here. So that's uh, actually pretty significant. Very powerful solar storm that could uh, bring the auroras down to some of the uh, middle latitude states. This is for tomorrow night. This is the Aurora forecast here with the KP index reaching around the 7 range. And as you can see, the view line here stretches down into, uh, well, about Nebraska area, Iowa, Wyoming, Idaho, maybe central Oregon area. And, of course, over here across the Great Lake, uh, Great Lake states uh, got a decent chance of seeing the Auroras tomorrow night and possibly into the evening there on Tuesday as well as we got uh, a series of uh, CMEs headed this direction here. Not as much of a series as what we had seen back in May when that historic Aurora event took place. That was a G5 class storm, by the way. And it was a roughly about five, maybe five or six CMEs that all bunched together to create one huge, powerful, long duration cannibal CME. This one right here, well, it's a combination here. It looks like maybe of two maybe three CMEs. There's one, two. Um, yeah, it looks like two decent ones. They're in the green. See your earth. Of course, the sun in the yellow. Decent shot here of seeing some elevated space weather activity here for tomorrow night. So uh, don't miss out. If you want to see the auroras tomorrow night, it's going to be the uh, key to watching it. Depending you have clear skies out there. Not a whole lot. Well, uh, depending on how thick the smoke is, you know, that could obscure the uh, view as well. Now, we did see some X-Flare activity uh, out there just a couple hours ago, a very impulsive X-Flare event. This was Earth-directed, uh, pretty much a bullseye shot here, but I don't think there was any CME associated with this X-Flare. We'll wait for the latest uh, chronograph imagery to come out tomorrow, but uh, that was a pretty powerful X-Flare, uh, X1.57 to be exact. And as you can see here, we've had numerous M flares over the last couple days. Uh, and obviously, we got to keep an eye on the rest of these sunspots out here, 3766. Uh, numerous regions out here showing some complexity out there on the Earth-facing side of the sun. Now, the region that did pop off the X flare centered right here, center disk. That remains a threat for some further X-Flare probability and obviously M-Flare and C-Flare activity. It's a huge cluster. Definitely a huge cluster of sunspots out here. And, uh, well, you know, we could be looking at some, uh, definitely some aurora activity here in the nights ahead, pending everything works out right. But uh, mid-latitudes, you guys got a 35% chance of seeing uh, some storming going on there across the area as far as auroras go. And uh, it does look like it's going to be uh, July 30th, July 31st time period. Now, this is going to be UTC time. So the detailed forecast here looks like 12 to 15 and 15 to 18 on July 30th UTC time. So the UTC time right now is the 29th at about 0630. So uh, tomorrow... But, uh, yeah, hopefully it's not too late in the day there on Tuesday, on Monday. Uh, yeah, it looks like maybe the brunt of this may be on the, uh, when it's light out with this UTC time. But we'll, we'll definitely check back on it in the morning, see how things are progressing uh, with the uh, incoming CME. But it looks decent there for tomorrow night, um, even though it may not be the brunt. Definitely got a decent chance there of seeing a, a uh, solar storm up there. Beautiful auroras. There's the X1.5 that came in from AR3766. Not a super strong X flare. You know, we've seen uh, higher in terms of the energy, but uh, definitely a uh, pretty powerful uh, Earth-directed 
event there. All right, continued X flare probability at 20% chance, M flare at 75, C flare around 99% chance or so. And uh, there's your roar forecast. Earthquake activity. What's going on out here? Let's go check out the earthquake events going on. Uh, Utah out here shaking just a little bit ago with a 4.5 near Bryan Head, Utah. Uh, southeast of the Cedar City area. It's been a little while since we've seen any movement out there, but got to remember there's fault systems all over here, all over the place. And a lot of these don't have a huge amount of slip rate that they occur each year. But, uh, you know, eventually they, they do produce some earthquakes. Uh, the, not for sure exactly which fault system this uh, 4.5 occurred on, but uh, it's up there in the mountain ranges. Obviously some faults out there that uh, have been building up a little bit of stress. Nothing big out there for now, though. Uh, southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Got a couple earthquakes here in the two range. Um, on that note, let's double check the trimmer map here tonight. Uh, and see what we got here for trimmer. Uh, 288 epicenters of Cascadia trimmer. A little bit here in the Vancouver Island range and also a little bit down in Northern California here. So southern end of the Cascadia. That uh, It seems as though when we get a little bit of activity here at the southern end, we get almost immediate uh, earthquake activity taking place here. And I'm talking about these three earthquakes here. Uh, 2.0, 2.2, and 2.3 upstream from the trimmer. The trimmer occurs down 35, 45 kilometers deep. These are 15, 31, and 28 kilometers deep. So upstream where the strain builds. Now whether this has enough strain to produce a big earthquake, well, that will be uh, in the uh, future, no doubt. I think we'll see some larger quake activity, just a matter of time. Uh, the rest of California, there's that uh, little three-pointer, 3.3. Striking out on the Vaca Fault, I believe that is. There in the Delta. 22 kilometers deep. Somewhat uh, a little, little deep for that area. But uh, I did see a handful of earthquakes there. 3.3, 1.6, and a 2.7. Overall uh, increasing activity out here across the West Coast. Southern California, a handful of smaller quakes out here as well, including a one-pointer. The uh, Salton Sea area, seen some minor earthquake activity. The San Andreas Fault continues to sleep for now. We'll keep that sleeping. We don't want to wake up the sleeping giant because when it wakes up, well, it's going to be a dandy of an earthquake. A couple ones out there across the area of West Texas, out in the oil fields. Um, nothing going on here across Yellowstone, but let's just double check, see what we got here for the latest data. And it uh, looks like some wind events earlier and the darker blue showed up across uh, various seismograph stations. I do see that 4.5 there in Utah. That's going to be the signature right about here. See that little thickness there on Holmes Hill? That uh, is it. Not a big earthquake. Um, let me check here something real quick. It's possible there that we, uh, so this occurred at 22 to 29, so roughly an hour ago. That would put it at right about here. So maybe this is a secondary, oh, take that back. That's the uh, Alaska earthquake. You can tell when these, uh, long distant earthquakes show up here across the seismograph station so that's going to be 4.5 utah this is going to be the more recent earthquake there in the aleutian trench area of alaska right that just came in uh, more recently 2149 well i had that backwards so <laughs> on the map there on the map uh this is going to be the aleutian trench earthquake this is going to be the more recent uh event there in utah all right but far as any seismic activity there locally non-existent right now so that earthquake up here in the aleutian trench uh 5.2 not a big one occurring 70 kilometers deep here into the aleutian trench of alaska northern end of the pacific plate 
Um, there's that little earthquake up there in Maine. That is from uh, earlier this morning, uh, a 2.8. Definitely not uh, any kind of big earthquake. All right, let's see what's going on out here in Hawaii. Got a little scattered activity going on here. Of course, we're quite pressurized up here across the upper east rift zone. Um, let's go over and check out the latest information here from the USGS with regards to Kilauea Volcano. And I do want to check out a seismograph station here real quick. See what we got. We'll check out this one. Still a little bit of earthquake activity showing up there. Uh, not quite as the intense swarm that we've seen uh, in the uh, days past. But uh, still seeing some earthquake activity out here on the graph. Pretty obvious. Let's see if we've got any major change across the tilt meters here. Fairly steady. There's the inflation event. Moved off from the uh, summit area off to the upper east rift zone where we're at right now. So there's a lot of magma pressurization underneath this area. But um, not for sure what it wants to do. There's a number of things that it could do. Uh, we're starting to come back up here in terms of inflation um, up at the summit area. So maybe a little bit of back building or further pressurization in the area overall. Uh, but overall, like far as the summit inflation region goes, we're, we're down. We lost a lot of inflation off to the upper east rift zone there where the uh, magma pressurization has taken place. And um, what all we can do right now is just watch it. Uh, I'm sure when we get some further movement out here across the Pacific Plate in general, that hot spot will definitely kick back up. Uh, Mariana Trench earthquake activity this morning. Uh, a little earthquake off the coast here of Japan, 5.2. A couple earthquakes down there in the Kermadec Trench. One super duper earth, uh, super duper deep earthquake here, 4.7, 658 kilometers. Goodness, um, it's that is way down there, about as deep as you can get. And um, looks like New Zealand's got uh, a little bit of three activity, some deeper. Overall, deeper activity here across the Kermadec Trench and New Zealand area. Not a whole lot of major adjustment at the surface, but uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on that. Uh, Middle America Trench here showing some typical movement there with the threes and fours. South America, roughly about the same as well. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Nothing going on there. Uh, down here in the South Africa area, got a 3.0. And also a 5.4 there, uh, just on the play boundary. Let's see here. 5.4 coming in at 313. This earthquake coming in uh, later at 719. This is a divergent oceanic uh, divergent act uh, boundary here. And when we see the separation down here off the Africa uh, continent here, that adds further strain out here. So that kind of makes sense that we're seeing some further increasing earthquake activity in the South Africa area following that divergent boundary activity with that 3.0. Uh, the Atlantic, as I mentioned, pretty quiet. Mediterranean, absolutely. Uh, looks a lot quieter here today. Let's go check out Iceland here real quick. I'm going to have to double check that every day because we're getting to a point here in, in inflation. Oh, goodness. So we're getting some earthquake activity out as well across the uh, the rift zone south west of the Savart Singi area. This is what I'm watching for. We normally see a little bit of elevated earthquake activity out here across this rift boundary prior to increasing movement there and uh, eruption activity across the Savart Singi region where we got a couple smaller earthquakes, but uh, these are fairly new. So we'll watch this overnight, see what happens by morning time. The uh, overall inflation here across the Savart Singi area will show us how inflated we are across the uh, area. Um, right here's Grindavik. Here's our previous eruption back in the end of May. These are the vertical displacement here in MM. 
Lost a lot of volume of magma. Now we're coming back up and we're well above the previous level reached that led up to the last eruption. So any, I think any time now. Uh, again, watch this earthquake activity out here. Uh, the key to, you know, seeing how soon we are to the eruption is watching what goes on across these rift boundaries and uh, definitely getting a little bit of activity stirring up out here. We'll watch that pretty closely. All right, um, we checked out space weather. I think, uh, like I say, I think Monday night might be good, depending on the arrival, right? We can't, they can't forecast these things to an exact T as far as the arrival, the density and whatnot. These computers and forecast models spit out a little bit of guesstimates, but uh, we'll see what happens over the next couple nights. Either way, there's a couple different CMEs headed our way. That could give us a G3 class storm, and that's pretty powerful. G5 was back in May, so we got a little ways to go before we see the auroras down into uh, California once again. Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, fire activity. I know uh, we still got this fire burning here in Northern California. Um, Where's my watch duty? There it is. Uh, this is what I wanted to check here on the park fire. Uh, by the way, the latest update here, 12% containment, 360,000 acres that are uh, been burned out here, along with numerous structures. Can't remember the exact amount, but um, you know, it's over the last couple days, it's been relatively mild with not a whole lot of wind. So the firefighters have had a chance here to get a handle on it. Hopefully, uh, although there's still a couple hot spots being reported up here on the satellite base imagery over here on the east side and also on the west side, a little bit up here north as well. Um, and of course, this is all rugged terrain, a lot of steep mountainous areas with forest. And uh, some of this has been burned, but regardless, the uh, last few years we've had rain, so the undergrowth has grown quite a bit. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of dead timber out there from previous burns, which is still fuel. Northern side, not too much up here around Shingletown. Uh, the satellite base imagery not picking up on anything yet, but looks like we're getting a little switcheroo of the wind out of the northeast here. That's not good. Push that further to, well, depend. Uh, none of this is good at all, but uh, hopefully they can get a handle on this because it's a, uh, it's a big fire. Aside from that, really nothing new in terms of new fires out here, which is good news. General look at the fires across the West Coast and uh, inland, Intermountain West areas. Well, there's quite a few fires out here, unfortunately. All right, folks. Um, I am going to jump off here. Hope everyone has a good night. Tomorrow is Monday. There's a little earthquake on Hot Caves, Hawaii. Just a little, little bitty small one. Uh, some of these seismograph stations have been going off and on offline uh, and then they'll pop up periodically. But uh, I say if they don't fix themselves by tomorrow morning, I'll just do a reboot on this uh, seismograph viewer uh, and then hopefully that will fix the issue. But uh, for now, we'll just keep these general stations up here. Uh, Black Stump Farm is in uh, North Island, New Zealand. There's Japan. There's another uh, New Zealand station, though. That's split, though. That's in between South Island and uh, North Island area. Hot Caves, Hawaii. And I uh, got a station there in Taiwan, too, monitoring some earthquake activity. So we'll catch you guys back out here in the morning. Have a good night, folks. Monday morning update. Catch you guys in a few.